Hi, Dr. Medina. Thank you so much for coming on the Diable Nutrition Podcast. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you, Lahana, for inviting me. Yes, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, before we started recording, I said um, Dr. Carpenter was telling me a little bit about what you do, and I found it so fascinating because I've never heard of it, and I honestly don't think a lot of people know about it. Um, so introduce yourself, who you are, and what you do. Yes, I'm Dr. Judy Medina. I am a general dentist, uh, but I limited my practice to what it's called myofunctional orthodontics. Yes. So, um, yeah, starting off with exactly what you said you do. Um, braces are really popular. Um, you kind of see it in every kid. It's kind of like the tradition. Every kid kind of gets braces. Um, can you first share with us why people would need braces and what happens in our mouth that people actually need them? Yeah, well, in, uh, in general, the, the current statistics shows that about 85% of the children are already developing a malocclusion. Malocclusion is the term that we use to describe the problems in the development of the jaws and teeth. Um, and it includes crooked teeth, uh, underbites, uh, 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 rotated teeth, and many other uh, problems also of the jaw, like, uh, you know, to the lower jaw to be, to be way back. Um, uh, or the upper jaw to be uh, very narrow, different, different kinds of, of, of um, uh, manifestations, if you want to say, uh, th that includes the mild occlusion. Um, so in traditional orthodontics, it's recommended to, to bring the children uh, for their first um, orthodontic evaluation at about the age of seven years old. But by this age, already the seven, from uh, 70 to 80% of the cranial facial development has already occurred. And the children has a mixed dentition, what it's called a mixed dentition. And it's the stage where they have some adult teeth and some baby teeth is, is still in their mouth. Um, many times, uh, they, when, when they uh, have already a sign of malocclusion, what they have, uh, what they've been told is that they have to wait until they are 12 years old uh, or they have to wait until later to then put the braces. Oh. And they just uh, keep the uh, children like in an observation stage um, at that point of seven years old because they still have a mixed dentition. Hmm. Um, the problem is that things get worse and, and sometimes when they get to that point of 12 years old to get the braces, uh, if they didn't have a, a phase in which they could make room for the teeth that are still uh, um, under the bone with the, the rest of the adult teeth, they won't have enough space. And then the recommendation might be to pull out some of those teeth, some of those permanent teeth, and then do the braces just to get those teeth aligned or straight. Um, so uh, extracting teeth or, or taking teeth out may, may bring other issues later on in life. Right. And that's why, um, if we can start earlier, uh, uh, developing the dental arches and helping that patient to, to, um, get rid of the things that are causing the issue, it's, it's better than wait until later to, to put the braces. Um, so like, isn't that with everything? It's usually like you're pre-diabetic. You're not diabetic all the way. So we don't help you until you're all the way needing yeah. help. <laughs> okay. uh, so basically, uh, you know, what we try to do with our system uh, of treatment, um, it's to prevent to get to that point. <laughs> and um, so the... In the best case scenario, there are some uh, orthodontic treatments that do recommend uh, to do an early intervention with or, or, or orthopedic appliances or uh, what is more popular known as expanders. And um, this could be better, of course, to avoid the extractions later on. But still, if the underlying reasons why the children in first instance, are developing that malocclusion is not addressed, then you will still have uh, problems later on with 
relapse of the treatment that has been done. So uh, basically, the, 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 what we focus on is on getting the treatment, you know, and, and helping the patients to, to improve the, the, the dental alignment and, and craniofacial development of, uh, or facial development, but at the same time, removing the, the factors that are contributing to the development of that malocclusion. That makes so, sense. Is there a reason why it's 12 years? Like, what's that special age when they use 12 years to, to get yeah, braces? Yeah, because by that time, all the, all the, um, in most of the children, all the permanent teeth are already in the mouth. And that's why they wait until that time uh, for, for braces. Okay, and, that makes sense. Um, what are the cons about braces? Well, uh, the, uh, the, the problem with the braces, I mean, we, we still uh, believe that the, the best function of the, of the braces is to align the teeth. That's, that's, that's for sure. It's a, it's a very efficient mechanical uh, tool uh, to, to get the alignment of the teeth. However, we do have to have some considerations about braces. And if we can avoid to have them, then it, it's a better idea, or if we can shorten the time to have the braces in the mouth, it's better, okay? So before we discuss that, let me, let me me mention that uh, we must, again, ad identify the reasons why the malocclusion is, is happening in the first instance, right? Um, so early detection, even earlier than seven years old, which is the, the recommended age for the parents to bring the children to an orthodontist to have a look and see what it's going on, it's earlier is better than that age. Uh, because if we can detect something even when the patient is already or only having primary dentition, there are things that can be done by that time. So if, uh, it would be better to, to have the child earlier than later. So that said, um, the, the braces are fixed appliances and that's uh, a major uh, consideration that we should have because it adds surface to the teeth which the patient has have to keep clean. And many times if a patient really don't have the idea of oral hygiene, that may cause problems like the developing of white spots around the brackets or decays or also gum issues, gum inflammation and, and uh, gum disease. Um, but there is even a more important consideration that many people don't know, uh, which is the imminent resortion of the roots of the teeth. That happens uh, all the time. It's, uh, in, in research has been confirmed that all the time we may experience, by the mechanical movement of the teeth, we may experience some reabsorption of the root. Reabsorption means that the root of the teeth may get smaller, or thinner, or shorter. Uh, so this is a very important issue because, uh, first of all, that it's something that we cannot avoid, that happens all the time. And even though usually it's mild, that we don't even see it in an x-ray, we don't, you know, we don't even can, uh, can notice it in an x-ray, there are other occasional times that it can be severe. And some patients uh, may, may show um, a shortage of all the dental roots or localized uh, shortage of the roots, which uh, implies a higher risk for those teeth to be lost. In, you know, if something happens like, like a periodontal disease in the future or any um, uh, accident or any other, you know, uh, thing that may happen that may um, cause the, the, the loss of that tooth even easier. So 
you know, it, it's, it, that's a very, and for me is the most important reason that we should consider um, when we um, use the braces in, in a patient's mouth. Then uh, we have also to consider that, that braces may be very painful for some people, you know? Some people are more uh, um, prone to have pain than others, more sensitive. So, and, and the actual forces that we uh, use for, uh, with braces is larger uh, than we actually need. Uh, so, you know, after every adjustment, some of the patients may experience significant pain after a few days. Um, also, the rubbing of the brackets of the metal, of course, in the mouth uh, may cause irritation to the soft tissue and some discomfort for, again, for sensitive patients. And lastly, also the contact of the metal in the mouth may also be a problem for some people that have uh, metal sensitivities. Although there are other alternatives like um, metal-free brackets or ceramic brackets, um, um, zirconium brackets, and nickel-free wires uh, for those cases, or even um, uh, plastic aligners for, for the patients that may have that. Um, sensitivity consideration. Awesome. And then going into explaining what you do with the myofunctional orthodontics, what is it and how is it done? Okay, myofunctional orthodontics is an alternative to traditional orthodontics. It has, uh, you know, the philosophy again is to, to more to the preventive uh, side and with, but with sufficient compliance of the patients, we can actually correct a developing malocclusion without the use of braces. Uh, we may need, in some occasions, uh, some other uh, uh, assisted uh, um, appliances like uh, expanders or um, in our practice right now, we, we are uh, using more uh, an appliance that it's called the ALF appliance or ALF appliance oh, cool. um, to help develop the dental arches. Uh, uh, and that way the teeth can uh, align correctly in the dental arch. Um, but in general, the techniques that we use in, in our program, I like to call it program instead of, of treatment, uh, can be used in a wider range of ages, uh, in, in, from infants to adolescents to even adults. Uh, but depending on the stage of, or the age of the patient, um, we can use different protocols, you know, that are either preventive, interceptive, or corrective. Okay. And, Basically, the, 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 what we do is use a series of myofunctional appliances called the myobrace and myofunctional activities, which uh, can be also called myofunctional therapy or myofunctional exercises. Those are the basic components. Then, um, you know, in very small children, like infants, we um, do more like uh, uh, advice and, and create awareness in the parents of the things that they may avoid and that the things that they can do to contribute to the uh, uh, normal facial and oral development and so forth. Um, and then by improving and guiding the, the facial growth of the children, we expect that the teeth will come, will naturally align in the, in the arches uh, because our body will know what to do. And, and when we give the the um, a stimulus to the growth, uh, to the oral facial growth, um, the teeth will find their way in. And most of the time, the alignment that um, we uh, observe to happen after we have done the myofunctional appliances and the uh, uh, exercises is pretty good. And Many parents say, well, I, why, can't, why do we need braces now? Uh, we really don't need to. So, and then the most important thing for me about this type of, of approach of, of myofunctional orthodontics is that um, 
it improves not only the the oral uh, uh, part, you know, and the and the, the the oral cavity, but also can can uh, stimulate to improve overall health and wellness in in children. Um, so that's basically. That's awesome. what um, so it can start, like you said, from infants, there's like no age specific to it. There's always something that we can be doing to better our oral development. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, what would, what would be like one of the techniques that you use? Is it like chewing things like when they come see you and does that help with the development of it? Yeah. When, uh, again, when, when we, for example, when we see children, uh, again, we, we, uh, do some advice to the parents like uh, um, first of all breastfeeding is the first thing that we need to to start with and um, breastfeeding does have to to uh, be done in a way that stimulates that movement of the jaw forward uh, so you know it's 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 uh, something that we might uh, tell the, the parents to get advice from a uh, lactation uh, consultant in order to um, establish a good posture of the mom and the pay and the baby in relationship to the mom, um, which is usually a, a more uh, seated, you know, semi-seated post position of the baby while they are breastfeeding instead of laying down in a bed with the baby and and right. um, breastfeeding from the bed. Uh, and I'm. And I'm, guess, I'm guessing lip and tongue, tongue tie would probably be another big deal. That is something uh, apart from, from, the, from the, uh, just the poor oral facial development. Right. They also have issues like that, like, like lip or tongue tie that are other contributors to the poor oral facial development. Um, so if we can detect those things early when the babies are, are very small and try to uh, fix that uh, sooner than later, um, then we have something less in the, in the way to, to contribute to the poor oral facial development. So that, yes, indeed, uh, we should take care of that. As awesome. Soon. What, what are some other health, like lifestyle habits that Promote, help promote good oral development besides breastfeeding, which is a really good one. I'm really glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, in, in, in the other, you know, we have to, to understand that malocclusion is not just about the teeth and, and, and the mouth. If there is a malocclusion, it's because there are other things uh, uh, affecting the patient for not having that or facial development that should be happening. So one of them, um, uh, or the major uh, focus is, uh, because it's the major and the most important function in our body, is breathing. Is, and the way that we breathe affects uh, the way that uh, our um, oral facial development occurs. Hmm. Um, so certainly this is the most important, again, uh, function in the body. And we have to address the the breathing and the, and correct the breathing patterns in order to be able to correct the oral facial uh, growth. Uh, so that's the, the most important part. Then, of course, breathing is affected by many aspects, and there's where where it comes the rest of the lifestyle things that we need to have into consideration. So, for example, nutrition and diet. Right. It's one of our big things in our practice to promote that uh, um, uh, functional nutrition and diet in a patient uh, since they are uh, uh, children. And, and the HANA, I know that uh, uh, probably the focus in your, in, in your work and uh, the work that you do, of course, is in the nutritional value of the mm -hmm. food, of course, uh, uh, very, very important but also the texture of the diet is important uh, because you know that um, in our modern society, industrialized society, most of the food is processed uh, somehow, you know, and people are very used to eat things that are already cooked and, and are softer than they are supposed to be. 
So we're not exercising our jaws the way that we should. And, right. and we have to promote that chewing on, in children. So that's another of the points that I recommend the parents when, when they bring their infants. It's to start with, when they start with a solid diet, to give the babies things that they might start wanting to chew. Of course, soft mm -hmm. things, but that they can't, that they feel that they need that, uh, or that they have that need to chew the food in order to, to, to eat it. Awesome. So it's very important to, to uh, start that as early as, as, as it can be done when the, when the babies start developing their teeth. So, of, and of course, in a way that, that the baby can tolerate and, and adding the foods little by little that the baby can actually uh, uh, process in his, in his or her mouth. Um, so I love it, that because yeah. we did baby led weaning. So we kind of skipped the pureed stage and stuck with soft yeah, foods exactly. for them to chew. And even, I know some moms are like, they don't have teeth. How can they chew like a piece of, you know, soft cooked chicken? I'm like, their jaws are stronger than you think. <laughs> yeah, they will find a way. And actually the problems that we have uh, later on with kids that don't want to swallow or they don't want to, uh, to, to chew and they always want soft food is because of that is because we have been giving them soft food process uh careers and we haven't given the chance to to learn how to chew because we are always giving them the making it easier for them so right. a little harder so they can uh learn how to work their jaws to to triturate them. Good. Good to know that there. That's another benefit of baby led weaning is oral oh, development. So I didn't. I didn't think of that part for some reason, <laughs> but that's a really good benefit to know. It, it is. It is. Then we have other other things that that of course we like to promote uh, to, to to additional lifestyle things like uh, the physical and emotional stress also can affect the uh, the way that we breathe. So. Also, it is important to, to um, you know, bring attention if, if the patient is showing signs of any emotional stress or, or excess of exercises or, or no activity at all, you know, things like that, that we have to, to you know, try to promote to have a balance in, in the lifestyle in, in general. And uh, also the posture, the, the addressing the posture is very important um, during the, the, the myofunctional treatment um, because again, our body is a whole complex uh, 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 mechanism and everything is connected. And, and you know, things that happen in the mouth affect the rest of your body and other postural uh, or changes in the rest of your body may affect also the jaws and the mouth. So uh, we like to, to promote in, in, in the treatment or in the program, the, the multidisciplinary approach. So for us, it's very important to have other colleagues uh, and health uh, uh, professionals involved and we do like to, to uh, make network uh, in that sense to address uh, all these other, other aspects that, that are contributing to the poor oral facial development. And that way, you know, we can help a, a patient in a more holistic way, in a more uh, comprehensive way. Um, again, uh, creating the, the awareness that it's not just about straight teeth. The straight teeth, everybody wants a, a straight teeth and, and yeah, that's, that's <laughs> awesome. That gives you a, a great smile and, 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 and good looks. But it's what is happening at, but, and, and, and why the teeth are getting crooked is, is, or, or you know, any, any other kind of malocclusion is what is more important. And addressing those aspects then we can have those uh, straight teeth, but don't, we cannot be focusing only on, on the alignment of the teeth with braces or whatever other um, appliances out there to straight the teeth. Uh, because 
we certainly can have a straight teeth in a crooked body. Right. That's, what, yeah, that's what we don't want. So, so that's in, in general our, our focus is uh, an overall uh, health and, and wellness and, and balance and, and, you know, making the patients uh, to, to have a more functional um, um, lifestyle. That's awesome. I'm so thankful for dentists like you and Dr. Carpenter. And thankfully, I'm very lucky to be in Austin where it's nearby. So I hope there's other dentists out there that do what you do. And I'm sure there is. But um, I definitely don't think it's as popular as, you know, braces and other orthodontics, because this is the first time I've heard of it. Um, but I'm very thankful for the work that you do. So um, tell us where we can find you, your website and where you're located. We are, okay, our website is Live Dentistry Austin. Dot com and we are located uh, on uh, on 183 uh, northbound uh, just right before McNeil Drive um, so it's 12731 uh, research Boulevard is the address um, and we are on Facebook by life dentistry and sometimes we post over there some uh, of our um uh patients uh that that uh want to show up their their beautiful and new smile and also some uh useful information for parents to to that we like to share um and yes uh, we are very uh excited to to be able to do this in austin um i think that we are the only ones having this type of, of um um, myofunctional practice uh, in Austin, uh, but we would love that many other dentists because these myofunctional techniques can be applied in any kind of orthodontics. It's just that um, it takes a little bit more time and and indeed of uh, that the knowledge that we have to know in 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 uh, how to make things happen. But I believe that every orthodontist should be using this myofunctional techniques. Oh, I definitely agree. And I saw the before and afters and they're beautiful. They really are. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's amazing for having like no braces. So everyone should go check that out because it is cool. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Absolutely. Thank you, Lahana. Thank you for inviting me.